What's going on, everybody? And welcome back into Heated Shenanigans Podcast. Chase, Mike, and Scott here. As the dust has settled from an historic SummerSlam, we are here to talk about what comes next. Chase and I were both there. We are both unbelievably exhausted and can barely speak ourselves. Mike watched from the comfort of his own home. Well, guys, let's uh, we'll, we'll kind of go in match order and talk about what it means for everybody going forward. And they kick SummerSlam off with one hell of a bang. Rhea Ripley is unsuccessful in her match against Liv Morgan. Dominic Mysterio turns. And the wild thing was Chase, like, again, I'm old. I'm partially deaf. So maybe I didn't hear this correctly. Yeah. Did it sound like they were cheering when they kissed, when, when Liv and – Dominic kissed. Oh, the, okay. So the section I was in was full of the boys. And I mean the boys in the best possible sense. I had a guy behind me who was using like super Mark wrestling terms. I had a kid next to me that was just wanting Rhea and Liv to take turns smacking him in the face. But when they kissed, that crowd blew. Blew. If there was a bill, if there was a roof on that building, it would have been gone. Mike, what say you? Uh, it's, it was booze from TV, from home. People were pissed. Sorry, I'm cussing this early. People were mad that Dom had switched up. It's so funny because someone pointed this out loud, and it's very true. He might be the first man to turn heel while already a heel. He, he healed himself infinitely. Uh, yeah, from my side, if people were mad, if people were upset, it definitely came across the TV that way. It you know, seemed I, I, like they were popping at like at the actual stadium. I don't know. I feel what comes next for them. I, If they do this right, there's a lot of money in Rhea chasing Liv. Especially now that Judgment Day is essentially no more as we know it, which mm-hmm. will probably have different members starting uh, Monday for sure. But we'll get into the the other members of Judgment Day. I Do you, are, do you feel at some point this is going to lead? Do you, do, will they do a match between Dominic and Rhea Ripley? Oh my God, I'm so glad you asked this question. I looked at Allie when we got home and I was like, Rhea has expressed wanting to wrestle a dude and who better than Dominic to just get in there and just let her beat the absolute shit out of him. That crowd would be hot, brother, the whole time. So I think it could lead to a match between them somewhere, some way down the line. But I think it goes in a sort of like, mixed tag sense like i think priest is going to have his own problems to deal with with finn but i think she's going to have priest help her against dom and live <clears throat> michael oh you want to know my opinion on uh dom versus potentially rhea ripley i just you know former north american champion you just hate to see a guy get jobbed out like that i think that's definitely where we're going i think it's going to be incredible when she finally gets her hands on dom uh it's going to be a big uh big pop ski from the crowd it's weird because i think the 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 future of live rhea and dom are going to be directly tied into also damien and finn Mm -hmm. there's a lot of layers to to judgment day now and probably the reshuffling of members but I think we have not remotely even scratched the tip of the iceberg of this feud. I think this has got a lot of gas left in the tank. Um, I guess speaking of gas in the tank, we've got a uh, Braun Breaker becoming the new who, 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 who. intercontinental champion by defeating Sami Zayn. And I, I have to, I will, I will say, I thought that was the right decision to put it on on Braun. Um, where I feel that these men will go afterwards, Braun is probably going to go on to dominate the Intercontinental title scene. I don't think it was a long enough reign for Sammy after taking out Gunther in that historic reign. But again, they probably didn't want to go with back-to-back multiple months, years for the title reign. Sammy, I think, is on a collision course to go back into the Bloodline storyline. I, I think he's going to be factored in to what's going on over there on SmackDown. But again, we'll get into that once we get to the main event. I was wanting to know what you fellas think. Go ahead, Michael. Um I don't I don't shy away from my my feelings on Kloneberg, uh the son of Goldberg, not Rick Steiner. Um I think we're going to get a reign very similar 
to Gunther, which is wild because we just got off of it. So going into another dominant heel run uh, that shortly uh, spaced away from Gunther's, I just feel like it's a little excessive. I think uh, Sammy should have got a longer reign, but people were already complaining, calling him Hogan, which is atrocious that anyone even made a comparison. But uh, yeah, I think Gunther's going to go on a tear. I I, I don't know if he'll, he, well, I don't think he's going to get close to Gunther's. I could see a year though. I could see a year. Uh, Sammy, yeah, I think he's definitely getting back involved with bloodline stuff, which couldn't come at a better time. Absolutely. The, uh, the the thoughts on this from you, Chase. So um, I don't know how your section was handling it, but my section, we were barking, baby. We were barking loud and we were barking proud, son. Uh, Cloneberg, if you will, according to one Michael, uh, he, everybody wants to like hate him for whatever reason. Like they all think he sucks, whatever. I don't get it. I see a future world heavyweight champion. I have said this to both of you plenty of times. Um, I don't know. I thought it was a really good match. Um, but something in the promo that Sammy said, like, the week before fucked me up a little bit. Because he said, I'm not an underdog. But that's what the, the WWE fans enjoy Sammy Zayn as the underdog. So I think that if he is going to get back into that bloodline stuff, he needs to be the underdog. And then he needs to be, the like, at the start of it. And then he needs to be the one who, like, pushes the new blood or the old bloodline over the new bloodline <clears throat> that's fair well again we'll get into this more once we get to the main event um oh, real quick sweet new randy orton merch picked up last night beautiful beautiful real quick though my problem with SummerSlam, them damn merch tables had they, nothing they had a jay uso shirt the new cody shirt this Roman shirt or the Randy shirt and the Cena shirt, I think. Everything else was like Cleveland SummerSlam 2024. I was there branding. And like that's not you gotta you gotta bring us options, my boy. They didn't even have any kids sizes shirts, so I couldn't get Sam anything. I had to get him a John Cena hat because that's all I could get him. But yeah, step your merch up, dude. Give us more options. This isn't fair. <laughs> Well, I mean, I had that, I had a similar complaint as well. But the uh, the next match was the Intercontinental Title match, Logan Paul. No, for, U.S. Title. U.S. Yeah, U.S. Title. Again, like three four hours of sleep. Yeah. And an eight hour car drive. But yes, United States Title. L.A. Knight finally gets a single championship run. Honestly, this felt very much like a make or break for his career yep. to win this match. And I don't know. I, I, it was a hell of a finish. I loved the finish. But that brain buster where he almost <laughs> snapped Logan Paul's neck, don't ever do that again. That was – okay. When he did that, the entire arena just cheered, and I literally sat there and went, holy shit, that hurt. Like – there was no good way to land off of that. I don't know who was at fault. I don't know if Logan didn't like, if he didn't do what he needed to do, or if Knight, LA Knight just couldn't like get him all the way over. I don't know what happened. There was some kind of miscommunication. Logan Paul almost died in his hometown. Well, and, and the thing is, like, I think the future of LA Knight, I think he's going to hold the United States title for a while because it will shut up a lot of the fans. Mm -hmm. Look, he finally got his title run. Let's be happy. He's going to. I, I fear, though, okay, I do think he's going to have a long reign as the United States title uh, holder, but I don't know how meaningful it will be at the end of it. Logan Paul, I don't really know what you go do with Logan at this point. You really can't. I mean, you could maybe, I would have said he goes after Cody at some point. That does not remotely look to be an option within the next, like, maybe two years, um, assuming Cody's probably not going to be champ for two years. But I do look at Logan Paul like there's really nothing at this moment for him to do. So maybe he just kind of sits on the side for a little bit. LA Knight, there's a lot of great mid-card talent for him to work with on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't think we see him get boosted into the main event picture with this run, but I, I, I have a feeling this is just going to be a busy work title. Michael, how you feel about it, dog? Uh, first of all, Logan Paul coming out with MGK. I mean, I thought I couldn't hate Logan Paul anymore. And then he comes out with that tall stick of a Q-tip looking like, ugh. I just didn't like it. It looked like the 90s threw up on his outfit. I didn't understand it. It wasn't like a cool outfit at all. He looked like MGK was dressed like Ricky from Trailer Park Boys. I said it at SummerSlam to Allie, and I'll say it again right here. Yeah. That's that's fair. Uh, I loved I loved the uh, outfit choice of LA Knight, the Jordan Game Six shout out with the boots in the trunks. The bull, it was it was great. As a Bulls fan, great, fantastic. Uh, couldn't miss there. Uh, glad they got the title off Logan Paul. Um, I hope they stop using Logan Paul. To be quite frank with you, uh, I don't know if they will though because they have a lot of money invested in him and the prime energy drink campaign uh but yeah i I could see la knight going on a hell of a run i think the mid card is his i think i don't think like you said like you said i think it's a little too late with as much storyline if he was on raw it'd be a different story it's it's all up for grabs over there but on smackdown his ceiling really is the uh, mid card but that's a good place to be because i feel like SmackDown has a bigger mid card than they do a main event scene well it's a little different with reigns back but you know what i mean so yeah i think sky's the limit for him as far as the mid card goes and i think that title looks really good on him i see i see an la knight versus an andrade happening soon i see la knight and carmelo hayes la and santos escobar like there are all these wonderful possible matchups for him and i will say from my perspective through these first three matches i think for my money la knight got the biggest pop up until that point the that oh my god when he pulled up and busted out the prime thing the whole crowd was getting into it already and then he walked out and they fucking lost it again and oh can we talk about because we didn't get to talk about it yet the, apparently triple h just loves jelly roll because this man had so much screen time he got to perform what the, was it the national anthem i don't he did the national anthem then he and then he got to the do a track song for and then he song. had that segment in the middle towards the middle with Miz and R Truth and gave that choke stand, slam where Austin Theory just jumped ten feet in the air for him, hey, made him look a like a beast. Choke slam, one arm, no other hand for support. Gorgeous. Picture Austin perfect. Theory might have just got Jelly Roll contract as a wrestler. <laughs> dude, could you imagine Jelly Roll in the ring, dude? It I don't want to. Horrible. I don't. <laughs> I watched Cheeks wrestle once in TNA. That was enough. Fair. Who? You've never seen Cheeks in TNA? No. When we are done with this episode, you're going to stay on here and you're going to YouTube Cheeks TNA. Okay. I, Isn't I Velvet remember, Sky going to come up? Man, I remember Adam no. Pac-Man Jones never wrestling but was under contract to TNA. No, nothing will top Cheeks, but we'll, we'll get to that after this episode. Okay, I got to find Cheeks after this. Ah, don't we all? Um, at the, uh, the next match... <laughs> The next match was the women's championship match. Bailey takes on Nia Jax. Nia, as expected, at least from this podcast, captures the SmackDown Women's Championship with a key cash in by Tiffany Stratton. I thought that was a great addition to get Nia the upper hand. Um, look, there are there is one thing that is on the table. Then it, it's as certain as as. The sun is going to rise and set in the, the evening. Nia is going to drop that title to Charlotte Flair. They're going to do Queen of the Ring versus the actual Queen. And then the eventual title will be taken off of Charlotte by Tiffany Stratton. That is what I strongly feel is going to happen. Now, does Charlotte need to be thrown in with another title reign? Absolutely not. At this point, she has more reigns than her father. They had to take title reigns away from this woman. But I feel that is what is going to happen. We'll probably get some little artsy-fartsy, cutesy uh, tease attempts by Tiffany on Nia. But I do want to take a moment and, again, congratulate Nia. She has worked very hard. This run has been unbelievable compared to the other runs. And you know what? 
it was a good match with Bailey, and that powerbomb spot was outstanding. Uh, really enjoyable match, but I that's kind of where I think the uh, the future is holding for Nia. Bailey, a little bit harder to uh, kind of gauge where Bailey goes after this. Um, there's really no, outside of Tiffany, there's not really a strong uh, women's heel on the roster for SmackDown for her to go up against. Uh, maybe she gets involved in the Blair Davenport, Naomi tussle. I, I don't know. Bailey's uh, future on SmackDown looks a bit murky. Um, I literally, I so it's so funny. I was there and I didn't see any of this match. I had, the, I saw the, I saw them setting up. They were doing like the 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 match promo, and as soon as I saw Nia Jax, I looked at Allie and said, "Gotta pee." So I went and had to stand in the bathroom line and I didn't come out of the bathroom until after the match had started. And I left to go to the bathroom before the match, before either one of them even made their entrance. That's how long the line was. And then your boy walked past some beer and I was already a little sauce. So I had to get more sauce and I heard Tiffany's music hit and I screamed, no, I'm going to miss the cash in. I didn't miss it. <laughs> Thank God. But I had to go back when I got home and skip through just to watch this match. So I had something to say. Powerbomb looked wonderful. I guess Nia deserved it. I don't think that Charlotte is going to take the title. I think at some point Tiffany will cash in, win the title, and then we're going to get Tiffany and Charlotte at Mania. And Tiffany needs to win at WrestleMania to really, like, solidify herself on the main roster. She's got to walk in Mania as champion, and she needs to walk out of Mania as champion. As far as Bayley, um, I don't know. We got a big deal with Netflix coming up in January. Maybe we shuffle the rosters a little bit. We move her over to Raw, slide her into that women's title picture. Who knows? Who's to say? Michael, how do you feel? Ah, uh, man. This was... In fact, a match that I watched Can was not my favorite match. There was a few parts that were okay. I do agree with Scott that Nia's run thus far, as opposed to her last run, is better. But the bar was low. It was low. And she probably hurt her hole on it, which I didn't realize she sells her hole in every match. Apparently, that's the only way she knows how to sell. I just, it's just not for me, but you know, that's okay. I don't have to like everything hey, uh, that quick, WWE does. Can you tell everybody what you texted me after Nia won the title? What did you say? I said Triple H hates wrestling, is what I said. <laughs> I was very frustrated at the moment because, unlike Scott, I didn't see this coming. Um, but you know what? Hey. Not every, not all good things last. And so there goes Bailey's run right out the window. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with Nia Jax. Um, I guess I, I would mean I would love Charlotte to come back uh, because if I'm picking between Charlotte and Nia Jax, I'm picking Nia Jax. Um, maybe a little three way situation uh, with Jade and Bianca could be cool. Um, I see Bailey kind of phasing into the tag division. Uh, because that's really the only two spots for, for women wrestlers to know me. You're either going after a single title or the women's tag title. I don't know who she would make a good tag with on SmackDown. I think Naomi. the shuffle, as Chase suggested, would be probably the proper move. But, uh, yeah, this was this was my least favorite match of the night. And I, but, but, you know, a little triple threat action, maybe at Survivor Series with those three could be pretty, pretty cool. Well, speaking of a potential looming triple threat, up next was Seth Rollins, special guest referee for CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. And the big breaking news from this is CM Punk was not hurt during this match. That was the biggest takeaway from this. Yes. Um, he held up. I, the bones held up, baby. I, I will say this. Drew was the right call for this to win. I don't care. This is Punk's first singles match in 10 years. He didn't need to win this. Drew needed to win this match. That was the right call. Secondly, this is very blatantly a carbon copy of Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, and The Undertaker, which is going to lead to a Hell in a Cell match. I will bet any amount of money 
that at Hell in a Cell, or Bad Blood, whatever the hell this pay-per-view is called, Bad Blood, we are going to get a triple threat Hell in a Cell match. And it is going to be between Seth Rollins, CM Punk, and Drew McIntyre. And there, I feel CM Punk will get the victory. Now, if you want an interesting, spicy take for where this might go, are you ready? We move on past Drew and, and CM Punk. Mm -hmm. They're teasing the whole AJ Lee thing on a weekly basis. They did mention AJ. They didn't mention the full name, but they did say AJ during SummerSlam. What if the blow-off match ends up being Becky and Seth versus Punk and AJ Lee? And you do it at WrestleMania. Oof. Oh, huge. There is, banger. there is such a small percentage chance that that happens, but it is professional wrestling and you can never say never. I do think this feud, again, as hot as it is, there is too much to be done with it for this to be done anytime soon. I would say Survivor Series, this is probably still going to go strong. Well, so we have another pay-per-view before Bad Blood. We have Bash in Berlin. So, do we do since Punk hit Seth with the go to sleep, and then Seth counted the three on Punk, do we go Punk and Seth at Bash in Berlin? Yeah. Have Drew come in, maybe beat up both of them, and then that's how we get to the triple threat home cell? Because I agree that we're getting a triple threat out of this, no matter what. But I don't think people are interested in seeing Drew and Punk again, even with a regular referee. And Drew and Seth feels like it just happened at WrestleMania because it did. So I feel like you almost have to go Punk and Rollins first before you get to the triple threat. Let me just say, as a certified CM Punk hater, this was my favorite match of the night. And before I knew there was going to be a comeback in the main event, I said this should have been the main event because this had the most heat. This mm -hmm. match was so well told with storytelling. It was just so good. Um, as far as where this goes, um, I, maybe maybe we get a little four-way at Bash in Berlin for that World Heavyweight title. Gives Gunther a pretty good reason to win if all three men can't get over their hate for each other, which was a through line through this match, which Punk ultimately fell to. Uh, and then maybe, you know, maybe that happens to Seth and Seth loses, you know, with the hate in his heart. Cause that seems to be what carrying the storyline. Um, because I don't know what else they're going to do with that main event, main event, uh, title on raw. Uh, cause it seems like Damien's going to be distracted with the downfall of, uh, judgment day. So. I like I it. Feel, I feel that's a strong, uh, possibility. Uh, speaking of, of Damian Priest, the, the next match, the semi-main, was Gunther versus Damian Priest. Yeah. And, boy, they tried to make Damian Priest look like Hulk Hogan throughout this entire match. This man hey, holds up. Listen, hold on. Before you start shitting on him, because that's not what we're going to do. No, it we're is. not. It is not. <laughs> no. If, listen, this match was good. I don't care what anybody says. It was good. It, it Gunther, was good. It was any time that Gunther... So Gunther versus a smaller opponent is always going to be money because the way he chops them, the way they can fly, all that. But Gunther versus another big guy is also always going to be money. And Gunther and Priest was fucking money. Priest, nobody has had Gunther bleeding from chest chops. Priest had Gunther bleeding from chest chops. Priest had Gunther in precarious situations through points in this match. Let me, I, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised where I'm about to take this. Please don't disappoint me. Last night at SummerSlam, you saw the winner of the Royal Rumble. It is going to be Damian Priest. You think so? I I get I go, am going on record unless some record-breaking signing happens. Damian Priest is winning the Royal Rumble. The story tells itself. You fought me at my chaotic worst. Everything fell apart around me at the worst possible time. I had you beaten in the middle of the ring, 
had it not been for someone that I thought was my friend. So Damian Priest is going to feud with the Judgment Day. That's great. It's going to be a, a, a good feud, I would presume. You get to the Royal Rumble. Damian Priest is going to wreck house in the Royal Rumble. He is winning the Royal Rumble. And Gunther is going to stay champion until WrestleMania. Because the money in the rematch, because I feel after watching, after watching SummerSlam last night, Damian Priest is a much better pure bona fide babyface than he is a heel. He just, his moveset is babyface moveset. Mm -hmm. Big, flashy moves. He does not wrestle as a heel. He wrestles as a babyface. And I think if you take time to invest into that and spend from now until WrestleMania, you're going to have a much better match because Gunther will be significantly more elevated. Uh, Priest will be significantly more elevated. And you're going to have a significantly good match for WrestleMania. I did not think I was ever going to say this in my life about Damian Priest. Say it. But I am telling you, I will bet any amount of money he is winning the Royal Rumble. So we have a turncoat on Heated Shenanigans podcast. <laughs> the Damian and Priest sympathizer live here in effect. Let me tell you what this felt like. This felt like watching a Roman Reigns match pre-2020, pre-pandemic. This felt like watching a baby face be shoved down my throat that I didn't ask for, that I didn't want, that I didn't need. And don't give me the bullshit like, oh, the faction's falling apart. This faction was born on turning on edge. So I have no sympathy for Rhea. I have no sympathy for Damien, who also did the same shit to Finn at one point when he had the briefcase. He cost him a match against Seth. None of this makes any fucking sense. The match was quiet as fuck. Towards the beginning, because no one cares about Damian Priest. He has no aura. He has no presence. He's an okay wrestler at best, which coming from the Ring of Honor class that he came from, everyone wrestled at least that good. So you have so many people you could pick for that spot, but no, it's fucking Damian Priest, isn't it? And we're about to get him shoved down our throats for the next 10 months. I don't get it. What in some of me? I always have to have a big face being shoved in my throat that I don't want. It's not Damien. I'm so glad you guys love him because he's there and he's going to have all the TV time. But I'm the one that has to deal with it. And it doesn't make any sense because guess what? He's an asshole and Rhea's an asshole and they fucked over Adam Copeland. And, and we're not we're not supposed to feel sorry because it happened to them. No, it's called karma. Fuck. Yeah, my man. Look at you go. It's probably going to lead to Finn losing as the demon again. So that'll be fucking fantastic. It's JD McDumbhead will be involved. It'll be great. That's where this is going. JD Hopefully McDumbhead. Gunther gets the match I talked about and he's done with Damian Priest. But Scott's probably right because like I said, this felt like the pushing of Roman Reigns pre-2020. Pre so that's probably where this is going. And that's probably why you recognize that's going to happen because that's what it felt like. Brother. Brother. <laughs> the greatest, the greatest take. That was a fucking... That was one of the best promos I've ever heard you cut before. Did we just From the have heart, an, Did we just have an Austin Bret Hart double turn <laughs> with David? I think we did. I really think we did. That was weird. But that was my weird. Man, my man's. I mean, everybody should love Senior El Campeon Money in the. Bank. Everyone's in love. You can hear crickets for the first fifteen minutes. Listen. Everyone. He, when he came out, he Punk got less pop than Jelly Roll, brother. Hey, Jelly Roll is did a picture perfect choke slam. A pitch perfect. He had a guy push up on his shoulder who's super athletic. It's not that hard. Hey, now, what, now, what and now in kayfabe, now in kayfabe, Jelly Roll's stronger than Undertaker because you weren't there last night. I'm not mad. I would have had a panic attack around all those people. All 57,000 of them, baby. Which According is, to the park, baby. Get back on track here for the main event. Bloodline rules. Cody versus Solo Sokoa. Um, nothing happened in this match. It was really a, a back and forth match. Cody won with the crossroads. Old, old school, baby face and heel. Solo was working chin locks. Cody had a big comeback. Solo cut him off. We got a comeback part two. Cody Cutter. Three crossroads, and you know that was really all that happened. You know, we didn't get any Tongans running in, or we didn't get a Samoan werewolf. Uh, I don't think we, we got. The, Ke we didn't get Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. 
We had the biggest return of the night after a uh, a long sabbatical from WWE. Arn Anderson made his return uh, Arn to, and, uh, to WWE. No, Pharaoh made his return to TV tonight too. So this was just a plethora of returns in this main event, dude. Um, I okay. On a, on a serious note, though, um, my one was in the air when that fucking music hit. Well, we're gonna get to it. I really, it's weird that Cody is undefeated in Bloodline Rules match. <laughs> Cody is the bloodline boy. But I will point out, I thought this match made Solo look like he belonged in the main event scene. So this match was so important to Solo, mm-hmm. more so than Cody, and they made Solo look like a threat. And now he looked like gassed about up. ten minutes in, like that man was sucking oxygen so bad the front row was about to pass out from oxygen deprivation mixed with the heat. But I thought the the interferences were lined up really good. Arn alludes to help is coming for Cody. He cashed in a favor. Um, Randy Orton returns, hits the couple RKOs. KO comes out, um, does KO things. You get Jacob Fatu doing an incredibly athletic move on Cody Rhodes to the outside through a table. Two of them. He did the moonsault too, and Cody was like in the middle of the ring, and he got he got distance on that bad boy. And he he possibly is severely injured, but I do want to bring up something that I had heard a report on. I do not remember, and I'm sorry the 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 site for the the report. I have read that the Fatu Jacob Fatu injury is kayfabe because they are trying to keep him away from Roman. They are, but him and Solo got they were they took pictures with somebody at a gas station or something last night after the show, and he had a full on walking boot on. And you can I, that's it. just sell it, brother. But I also read that, and it wasn't like a fully confirmed thing. But from what they had been told, the way that he sold it, he wasn't supposed to sell it that hard. So I don't know if he just decided to actually sell it that hard or he actually might have really fucked himself up in an accident. Well, and the thing is, we we get to the part which everybody and their brother has been wanting for months and they finally got it. And it was it was a Road Warrior-esque pop when Roman came out. Once this dude, and again, I want to say this, I am not taking any shots at Cody. But right now, he is the number two baby face in the WWE. That's why I messaged, not, I messaged that to Chase. I said, I don't think Cody's the number one baby face anymore. It, it's not even up for debate. Like, these people are behind Roman. And I thought they did a brilliant move with this. Because what somebody was pointing out in the crowd, they asked, what happens if Roman attacks both Solo and Cody because he's got issues with both? No, because if they cheered him hitting Cody, it's over for Cody. That's it. He is done. But I do think Roman is being requested to be on Raw for Netflix. Now, I don't know if they're going to cave in to that. They may. I don't know. But you going forward, if Roman and Cody are both baby faces, they can't be on the same show. No. This this ain't going to work. Not I looked long at- I looked at Allie in the car on the way home. She was like, so Roman doing that last night, is that the return of, like, babyface Roman? And I said, really, at this point, I don't know if the term babyface and heel matters. I think the term that matters is over. And as long as you're over with the fans, they're going to cheer you regardless of whether you work rest holds the whole fucking match or whether you're doing flashy stuff the whole match. It doesn't matter. And right now, since he's back, Roman, without a shadow of a fucking doubt, is the most over guy on that roster. Before we got in, people were outside chanting, we want Roman. We walked through the door scanning tickets. We want Roman. All night long, people were chanting for Roman before it was even time for Roman to happen. There is one other thing I want to point out that I I, I didn't notice this until after I was sitting in and stewing on the on the match the carmelo hayes match with cody aside yeah every title defense i believe cody has had since has involved weapons and not a clean finish or he has lost lost. okay but who's who's his dad yeah 
Who's his dad, Scott? Come what on. Dad do? If the American yeah, Dream doesn't like work, it what do you want to talk about? I'm just saying, I do think Cody needs a decisive, clean victory at some point, preferably soon, because there's a lot of like, well, he's not really had any solidified wins. Even him winning the title was with interference. Like, you, you go back to the beginning of this, I, I really want to see okay, the baby. But hold, hold up. Wasn't that whole Roman Reigns' entire title run was just run ins and fucking weapons? You for like five years? Yes. The heel? Yes. Yeah, but Co okay. 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 <laughs> I don't actually have an argument. Listen, <laughs> pointed that out. And now I'm, I'm, now talking? I'm here. <laughs> but I do think I do want to go back to uh Roman Reigns being the biggest baby face in the company now. An issue they are going to run into if they do not split them up is I I am a certified Cody Crybaby. This is not hate at all. He is a little corny of a baby face. And when you have the option of a cool baby face and like the white meat baby face, the crowd's going to lean towards the cool, edgier guy. And that's going to become an issue for Cody. Now, like Undertaker has pointed out on his podcast, Cody is going to be a great heel whenever he decides it's that time. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be soon in the next year or so. But if he wanted to go that route, and be the ultimate heel for the for Reigns, he could do that because Rock and the Bloodline storyline can't go on forever, despite how much they're going to try to make that happen. Uh, but yeah, that's something they're going to have to pay attention to, and it's going to be interesting to watch that dynamic play out on SmackDown every week going forward, you know, depending on Roman Reigns' schedule. I truly think the future for both men, I think the Bloodline is going to eat up a lot of Roman's immediate future. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you could do it. You could bring back the original cast to the bloodline, including Sammy. If Jacob's injury is this severe and it's legit and he's going to miss a, a lot of time, you maybe bring up another bloodline member. Zilla is a popular name going around. Um, I do want to say, did meet Zilla at WrestleCon. Uh, he was chilling out in the lobby. Super nice guy. Unbelievably kind to everyone. And he was swarmed. When I tell you there was 15 to 20 people around him and he handed it like a true professional, he's got a bright future whenever they pull the trigger on you him coming to the he didn't handle like a true professional? No showing his indie booking this weekend so he could be at SummerSlam, baby. And then he had shitty seats at SummerSlam anyway. Was Didn't he have a show with GCW in Cleveland? He had... He, I'm So he showed up to GCW because that was Friday. Yeah. I read online several places. He had another indie show booked for Saturday, and he no-showed that show so he could be at SummerSlam. And then he didn't even have – somebody took a picture of him in the crowd at SummerSlam, and he was, like, up in – he was in the 100 sections, but, like, way up in the 100 sections. So I'm like, your, your family's literally the main event tonight, big dog. They couldn't get you backstage? They probably but did afterwards. He could have just been chilling with all the other GC Dub guys that were there. I don't know. Um, real quick, though, to, to, to wrap up here, I think the future for Cody, um, I think he's going to be involved in the Bloodline stuff a little bit longer, maybe a little bit too long. I, I The end game, it feels like it's Cody Rock at WrestleMania. That, that That's where we're headed. Um, maybe a pit stop against randy orton unlikely but preferred if i'm picking between another uh roman match the the, the problem is roman and cody are split one one so they're gonna go i was about to one. say there's still the prospect of roman cody three that i still think is a lot of money left on the table if they don't go there at some point so i pitched a scenario in the car that i thought would would could and should work so, at the Rumble, we have Cody versus Randy Orton for the WWE title. Randy Orton takes the title off of Cody Rhodes because Cody Rock is going to be big regardless of whether it has a title or not. And let's face it, all three of these guys sitting right here, none of us want to see Rock win the title at Mania. None of us. So, I think Randy beats Cody at Rumble. 
And I think I don't think John Cena wins the Rumble, but I think we get John Cena, Randy Orton one final time at WrestleMania on the farewell tour. And I think Cena wins the title at Mania to get his 17th world title because he's already before the year is even done. Like he announced after Money in the Bank so far, he has signed on for at least 40 dates next year. So even if it isn't like a lengthy title run, he could make it like Mania and maybe two PLEs after that and then drop it, drop it to somebody to solidify them. Maybe one who, 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 Braun Breaker, maybe. What, what, you don't like my idea? You liked it until I said Braun Breaker, huh? It was a great idea until that last little bit. <laughs> um, Mike, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, overall, it was, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a decent show. Uh, I'm excited to see where the fallout goes ultimately, the end of Judgment Day, which has been a searing force on Monday nights for the last couple of years. Uh, kind of glad to see that going into the next phase and the bloodline story with Roman back is going to become infinitely more interesting. Uh, yeah. So I'm excited to see where things are going. Before we sign off, before we let the people go, September 21st, Lafayette, Indiana, the North end community center house of heat pro wrestling proudly brings to you homecoming. Look at the mat. Look at the flyer. We got Mr. Kate. We got Eric Dillinger. We got Josh Crane, Brett Havoc, GPA, Laney Luck, Dale Patrick, the Iron Demon, Shane Mercer. You don't want to miss this show. Hit up my man Scott. Check out Eventbrite. Get your tickets day of at the table when you walk in the door. It doesn't matter how you get them. Acquire them, folks. Get those tickets. 